Good morning, brethren of Holy Joy Church, Incorporated UAE, our main church in Sharjah, branches in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and Smandra Selkaima, members of Holy Joy Church, Incorporated Duha, Qatar, all our Berean pastors, ministers, pastors in training, Berean students of Malaysia and UAE, Shabbat Shalom. So today, we continue our theme last week about the, the, oh, about the tree of knowledge of good and evil and how it affects us in our eternal salvation. And today I will be preaching the eternal refuge. So let us pray. Father God, thank you, Father, that today you have again shown us your faithfulness to us, that you have continued to protect us from the coronavirus pandemic, and you have always been faithful to, in all aspects of our life. I pray that you will anoint my lips, that only the words you want me to speak will I speak to your people, and I pray that all the angels in heaven, angels of assignment, ministering angels of God, warring angels of God, ministerial and territorial angels assigned to Holy Joy Church Incorporated, UAE and to this pastoral center, the house of God, are now in their position and they are surrounding this place, even the places, the homes of all members of Holy Joy Church who are watching this live streaming and even their invites who are also with them in participating into this sermon. I pray, Lord Yeshua Messiah, that you will send the Ruach HaKudis Elohim so that those whose hearts you have prepared to receive you will also be manifested with the Holy Spirit of God and that they will continue to become your children until the day when we all enter the new Jerusalem. In the mighty name, Yeshua Messiah, I pray. Amen. So let us open our Bible and go to Deuteronomy 33, verse 27. The eternal God is your refuse. And underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. Amen. So, introduction, our Lord God is an awesome God. He is merciful, compassionate, and faithful to all humankind. And in the time past, before Yeshua Messiah came out of the bosom of the Father, He commanded the children of Israel to set up six cities of refuge to save those who had unintentionally killed someone but still wanted to live. Sinners who desired to live could be given an opportunity to live by running to any of the six cities of refuge before the gate of the city closes. At least the avenger of blood cannot kill him before trial comes. Today, all mankind have only one eternal refuse, the Son of God, Yeshua Hamaseah. There are no more six cities of refuse. Only the Son of God stands as our refuse, our <coughs> defender, and our deliverer, our fortress, and the rock of our salvation. Amen? First point, the Son of God reveals God. No human being has ever seen God, and no one knows about God. But Yeshua HaMasiah shows us God, hence He is called the truth. Only Yeshua HaMasiah alone can show us God. John chapter 7 verse 28, then Jesus cried out, as he taught in the temple, saying, You both know me, and you know where I am from. And I have not come of myself, 
but he who sent me is true whom you do not know. Amen? Since Yeshua Messiah shows us God who we cannot see by relying on man's abilities and sciences, he is the truth. The Son of God is the truth because He is the only one who has shown God to us. Hence, Yeshua HaMasiah says, Whoever has seen Him has seen the Father. He also said, I am the truth. Nobody can see the Father but because Yeshua HaMasiah showed God which is invisible, we have know him we have known him and he is the truth he revealed the invisible god to us by no other means not even the angels show us god they can do what god orders but they cannot show us god to see the son of god is to see god to hear his voice means to hear the voice of god And to know God is to know the Son of God. John chapter 1 verse 18 No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Amen? But if you have seen Yeshua HaMasiah, but you don't know God, you haven't seen the truth. You should know the real meaning of the truth. The Bible says you should know the truth and the truth will make you free. Amen? People don't know God. They think that He is the terrible God who strikes people with lightning. But when we come to know God through Yeshua HaMasiah, we realize that God is like a father who is looking for his child. Since we know God, we know God the Father same way that the Son of God knows Him. John 14 verse 20 At that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Today, Yeshua HaMasiah expects us to know the Father just as He knows Him. He said, you must know the Father just as I know Him. Amen? Second point, God commands sinners to live. Before Yeshua Masya came on earth, God commanded sinners to run in order to live. In the Old Testament, a person who committed sin was supposed to be stoned to death under the law they should die. They would kill the sinner. Since the sinner will be put to death, God has commanded the children of Israel to set up six cities of refuse where the sinner can run to in order to live. Numbers chapter 35 verses 9 to 12 Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, verse 10, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, verse 11, Then you shall appoint cities and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, verse, verse 12, These shall be cities of refuse for you from the avenger, that the manslayer may not die until he stands before the congregation in judgment. Amen? So God's command is the law. So it is clear that the law prompts people to save their life and to run to the city of refuge. The law promises people the desire to live to save their life. In other words, God himself through the law reveals that the fundamental in our faith life is to have an attachment of life. The manslayer, for instance, 
has to continue running and, inter, and enter the city of refuse before the gate is closed. So, tandaan natin na ang ating Panginoon mismo nag-encourage noon sa mga Israelita to sit up. It was not just an encouragement but it was a command to sit up six cities of refuse. At ang purpose ng six cities of refuse na kung sino yung nakapatay ng tao unintentionally, then he will not be put to death. It's because the law said that all sinners must immediately be put to death. So to save his life before he will face the trial, they can run to any of the six cities of refuse. He has to keep going with every strength he has in order to live, in order to save his life, for he loves his life. If he can make it to the city of refuse, he is saved. He saves his life from being stoned to death on account of his sins. These cities of refuse were located in Kedesh, in the land of Naphtali, Shikim, Hebron, Bezer, Ramot, and Golan. Wari is a fin city of Naphtali assigned to the Jershonites, Levites, at the extreme south of Judah. It was originally a Canaanite royal city where during the time of the judges, this city of refuse was the place where Barak and Deborah, pro prophetess Deborah, assembled the tribes of Naphtali and Sibulon against Sisera. The next one is Sikim. Sikim is named after the Kinaanite prince who abducted Dinah, the only daughter of Jacob, and in the Hebrew Bible was an Israelite city of the tribe of Manasi and the first capital of the northern kingdom of Israel under Jeroboam. If you remember in my past preaching, I said that when King Solomon died, his son Rehoboam did not accept what the people with their leader as Jeroboam to listen the the forced labor which King Solomon imposed during his time. So what happened? The kingdom was divided into two. The south kingdom remains to be the kingdom of King Rehoboam or the original kingdoms which was started or it began with King Saul, then King, King uh, David, then King Solomon. And the other kingdom, the new one, which was set up by the rebellious group, ten tribes of Israel, under the leadership of Jeroboam, was uh, in, the, in the city of the tribe of Manasseh and the first capital of the northern kingdom of Israel under Jeroboam. So that you will understand the south kingdom or the original kingdom under King Solomon which was turned over to his son King Rehoboam was called the kingdom of Judah and the capital is Jerusalem. The North Kingdom, which was the New Kingdom, the, uh, the, that Kingdom, the North Kingdom, was, uh, wa it was in the, under the, the two, uh, in the area where the two, what they call this, two sons, area in him inherited by the two sons of Joseph, Manasi and an Ephraimite. So, you, I also mentioned in the past preaching that this king Jeroboam, the first king of these ten tribes of Israel who separated from the south kingdom, 
came from the tribe of Ephraim, who is the brother of Manasseh. So I hope you understand. But this, can, this kingdom was in Samaria, and the capital is, uh, the kingdom is Israel, called Israel, and the capital is Samaria. The other one is Judah, capital is Jerusalem. This North Kingdom, the New Kingdom, is called the North Kingdom or the Kingdom of Israel, but the capital is Samaria. This Canaanite city is now known as Tablos of the Palestine. So it does not belong to Israel now. It is under the Palestinian rule located 34 miles north of Jerusalem. In English, this Hebrew word means back or shoulder, a refuge of the lost in the wilderness. So that is the meaning of Sikkim. And we, will, we should remember that Sikkim was the name of the prince of the Canaanite who abducted Dinah, the only daughter of Jacob, and raped her. And then he said, I will marry her, but the, the sons of Israel, Simeon and Levi, killed them. After they were able to deceive them to go for uh, circumcision. So while they were, they were in pain, after the circumcision, they, they could not defend themselves and they were all, they all perished because the two sons of Israel led uh, their group to kill all of them. Amen? Amen? Luke 15 verse 5, And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. So this verse in Luke 15, if we remember and we are reading the Bible, it talks about the 99 sheep. 99 sheep that were left because a sheep was lost. And so the shepherd went out to look for the lost sheep. That's why the meaning of Shikim, back or shoulder, means a refuse of the lost in the wilderness. The third city of refuse is Hebron, which in English means fellowship or unite. Our Lord Yeshua Masaya invites the unwanted into intimate relationship with Him. So take note that all the meaning of the six cities of refuse refer to the character of our Lord Yeshua Hamaseya. Amen? The first, the first one, Kidesh, means sanctuary. Yeshua Hamaseya is our sanctuary. That's why the title of my, of my preaching is Eternal Refuse. He is our refuse. He is our sanctuary. The next one, Sikkim, what does it mean? Back or shoulder, which also means a refuge for the lost, which is simplified or exemplified by the lost sheep in Luke 15. Yeshua Hamasaya is the shepherd who is always looking for us to come back to God. So the third city of refuge, which I said, means fellowship or unite. Our Lord Yeshua Hamasaya invites the unwanted into intimate relationship with Him. If we recognize our relationship with God without intimate relationship with Yeshua Hamasaya, we cannot go back to God the Father. Amen? So known as the ancient city of Palestine, after the Israelites entered Canaan from Egypt, Hebron was given to Caleb. Okay? When they entered Canaan, the, when they entered Canaan, Canaan, the Israelites found Hebron as part of the area occupied by the Palestine. But they were able to uh, took it in a war. That's why after that, Caleb, if you remember Caleb, Caleb and Joshua were the only uh, left among the 12 spies who were sent to spy on the, uh, on, the, on the plains of Jericho. Why? Because they said that we can defeat the, the, we can defeat the Anak. Anak, 
is a tribe of the giants. He said, we can defeat them. But all the ten said, no, we will, be, we will die if we enter that place. So God make them survive. That's why he appointed Joshua to lead after Moses for the Israelites to enter Canaan and Caleb now occupies Hebron up at his choice. Known as the ancient city of Palestine after the Israelites entered Canaan from Egypt, I repeat, Hebron was given to Caleb as an inheritance of his tribe. King David first proclaimed a king here in Hebron. So if you remember, um, David ruled for 40 years as king. But he was first, he was first crowned and declared and proclaimed as king of the king of the kingdom of Judah in Hebron. He occupied Hebron. And then in Hebron, he ruled there for seven years. And the remaining 33 years during the lifetime of King David, he ruled in Jerusalem in Mount Zion. Actually, the, the palace or the kingdom of King David was later transferred after the Israelites or the ten tribes who defected or who left the southern kingdom when they returned after the death of, after the, death of the, the son of Saul and, and Saul. They accepted David as the king. So David transferred from Hebron and went to Jerusalem and he established his kingdom and his palace in Mount Zion. So if you go to Jerusalem, there is a gate of Zion. And there you will see the rampart of King David where King David was uh, walking on one moonlight night and so Bathsheba. So that is the place. The Mount Zion. So, Philippians 3 verse 10, That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. The fourth city of refuse is Bezer, which means fortress. Fortress means a fortified place. And in the Bible, Yeshua HaMasiah is our fortress and our strength. Amen? So if you look at the six cities of refuge, as they were established in the different areas, it carries one by one the characteristics of our true one and only God, Yeshua HaMasiah. So, may I say that before Yeshua HaMasiah came down as our Lord and Savior, God the Father already introduced who is Yeshua through the establishment of the six cities of previews in the land of Canaan. Amen? Psalm chapter 18 verse 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Amen? The city of Hebron, which is the fourth refuge, city of refuge, it is located until this day in the east side of Jordan in the tribe of Reuben in the plains of Moab. We know that Reuben is the eldest son of Judah, and it was his tribe who inherited this place where, he, where, the, where the fourth city of refuge is located. Amen? Joshua chapter 20 verse 8. And on the other side of the Jordan by Jericho eastward, they assigned Beser in the wilderness on the plains from the tribe of Reuben, Ramoth in Gilead, from the tribe of God, and Golan in Bashan, from the tribe of Manasseh. Amen? Now, going to the fifth city of refuse, it is called Ramoth. Ramoth, which means exalted. It is a famous city in the mountains of Gilead, 
often called in the Bible Ramoth Gilead. And sometimes it is called Ramoth Mispit or the watchtower in Joshua 13 verse 26. Actually, when I first entered Israel, Rosbeth, myself, my, my youngest son, uh, Lyle, and Gina, we went to this place in uh, this, this place in uh, Mispi, Ramat Mispi. It is called now Ramat Mispi. It belonged to God, was assigned to the Levites, and became one of the cities of refuge beyond Jordan. It was famous during the reigns of the later kings of Israel and was the occasion of several wars between these princes and the kings of Damascus who had conquered it and from whom the kings of Israel endeavored to regain it. So, I repeat, this place in Ramoth Gilead, this was the location of all the wars, the battle between the kingdom of Assyria who wanted to, who tried to, uh, defeat the Israelites because they want to take the kingdom of Israel. This is the kingdom of uh, led by uh, kingdom of the ten tribes of Israel under their king, King Jeroboam. So this was known to be famous for the wars during the time when Damascus, where the king of Assyria was having his uh, palace and the seat of his power entered and made war against the kingdom of Israel. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 4 and in that day you will say praise the Lord call upon his name declare his deeds among the peoples make mention that his name is exalted. So whose name are we exalting right now? Always, Yeshua HaMaseya, as He is our Lord, our Savior, our Master, and our God. Amen? Amen. The sixth and the last city of refuge is Golan, which literally means joy, their captivity, and their rejoicing. Yeshua HaMaseya is the foundation of joy for the unhappy so those who are broken hearted who, whose husband or whose wife left them for another loved one or they were being uh, broken hearted because uh, these sweethearts have separated or they have been mourning because of a member of the family who died who is our foundation of joy only Yeshua Masriya we cannot find the joy from wealth. We cannot find it from drinking and smoking or going with the barkadas. Only Yeshua Hamasaya is the foundation of joy for all the unhappy and mistreated. Amen. Luke chapter 2 verse 10. Then the angel said to, to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Now, Golan, a place east of the Jordan, a town of Manasseh, in the heights of Bashan, east of the Jordan, a city of refuse. It is in Bashan, in the half-tribe of Manasseh. Okay? This is the half-tribe inheritance of the half-tribe of Manasseh. I will explain, there is a Jordan River. Half of the tribe of Manasseh inherited the side, left side of the Jordan River. But across the Jordan, the other half of the tribe of Manasseh inherited it. So baka na, nahati ang Manasseh na tribe sa dalawang lugar. Ano ang nag-divide sa kanila? the Jordan River. So, it is being said that this Golan is in the place of Manasseh, the inheritance of the half-tribe of Manasseh, the brother of Ephraim, the two sons of 
Joseph. In the 1967 war, now this is now the modern day reality. In the 1967 war, Israel ceased from Syria, the Golan Heights. So we can see that this Golan Heights during the war, it belonged to Syria, not part of Israel. But during the 1967 war, Israel ceased from Syria, the Golan Heights, and since then, it has been claimed by both countries. So, as we can see, all the six cities of refuge have a long history of conflict, and all of these of this cities of refuge symbolize the characteristics of our God, Yeshua Hamasiah himself. So, I repeat, we can see, even from the assignment of the six cities of refuge, as the name refuge means, the place where we can seek for asylum, it represents, it symbolizes who? Our God. Although at that time, Yeshua HaMasaya was still at the bosom of the Father God. Amen? Joshua 21 verse 27 also to the children of Jershon, of the families of the Levites, from the other half-tribe of Manasseh, they gave Golan and Bashan with its common land, a city of refuge for the slayers. Yeshua Messiah came to defeat the devil and condemned him as the enemy of God, who defied the Sabbath place of the Son of God in heaven, and defiled the name of God, he stood from henceforth as the only safe and personal refuge of all the people in the world. Amen? Specifically to all, the re specifically the safe and personal refuge of all the people of God, including ourselves. We now have one refuge with us. Yeshua Hamasiah, our living Yah, our Lord and Savior, Master and God. Psalms chapter 62 verse 8. Trust in Him at all times. You people, pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Amen? So God does not disappoint those who have such love for attachment of life. Even though you are a sinner, if you want to live, you can be saved. Amen? Yeshua HaMasiah shed His blood for the one who wanted to save their lives for they need His blood. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Those who desire to live are the ones who need God's grace. No grace is given for those who do not want to live. The only way to be saved by his son is by relying on God who is our grace. According to the law, a sinner must die. He must die for the wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of life is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So, sin cannot be atoned through man's hard work. So a sinner has to die to pay the price of his sin. Even God cannot bypass the law. Man has to die according to the wages of sin. But Yeshua Hamasiah died in the price of mankind so that people can be saved by relying on the merits of 
Jesus' death. It is a substitution or atonement. Sinners can only rely on the substitution, any atonement of Yeshua Hamasaya. He has to die for mankind. Unless someone died in a sinner's place, he has to die for his own sin. There is no other solution for sin. The price of a sinner has to be paid forever. Without Yeshua Hamasaya, we cannot be saved unless we rely in the grace of Yeshua Hamasaya to die or to, to die on, in His place. It is impossible for us to live if we don't rely on His merits. There is no way of going to heaven without Yeshua HaMasiah forever. We rely on Yeshua HaMasiah to receive His grace. I will further explain. Without Yeshua HaMasiah, we cannot go to heaven. We cannot go back to God the Father who has been waiting for us to return. So, we rely on Yeshua Hamasaya so that we can receive His grace. This grace is gift and this gift is the gift of salvation. Amen? Acts chapter 15 verse 11 But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Amen? To receive much grace means to be forgiven much. So, without asking forgiveness from the Lord Yeshua Masaya, we cannot receive grace. I repeat, grace is given to us. It is offered to us by the Lord Yeshua Hamasaya, but without repenting, without asking forgiveness directly from the Lord, we cannot receive the grace of salvation. So, alam mo, sa college, pag nag-aral ka, merong tinatawag yan na prerequisite eh. You cannot take mathematics 2 unless unahin mo ang mathematics 1. It is the same. If you apply this, we cannot go. We cannot receive the grace without first repenting, without first asking the forgiveness of the Lord. Amen? He can receive such grace only though he has no attachment to life. People like the criminals who were a people like the criminal who was crucified with Yeshua Masaya are the ones who receive such grace. So, the criminal who said to Yeshua HaMasiah, Lord, remember me when you reach your kingdom. So, he was showing his desire to live, although that day he would be crucified together with Yeshua HaMasiah. He did not believe that Yeshua HaMasiah was a criminal, but he believed that Yeshua HaMasiah could save him and give him life everlasting. Amen? So having, has, having such a desire to save his life, the criminal who was crucified desired to live and such receive God's grace. So this verse means that whosoever wants life forever, whoever has a desire to eternal life, God gives his only begotten Son who believes in Yeshua Masaya who has a life forever. Amen? Ang binigay sa atin ng Diyos Ama, hindi po direct na binigyan tiyan na yung binigyan, tiya, uh, binigyan tayo niya ng salvation kung hindi dinaan po niya sa kanyang anak dahil ang anak niya mismo is our salvation. Ang anak niya, binigay niya sa atin so that we will have 
eternal life. Amen? So without going to Yeshua Hamasaya, we can never go back to the Father and we can never receive the gift of salvation. Amen? Fourth point, seek refuse to have power. The only opportunity for man to seek Yeshua Masaya and to make him our personal refuse is now, is now, today, while we are still in the flesh. This is our only chance to receive grace while we have the time in our flesh. We have our soul and our soul strives so our soul lives forever. If we are not saved while we are still in the flesh, meaning we are still alive, if we cannot receive salvation now, we cannot be saved. Amen? After we die, judgment comes. There is no alternative. There is no other way but to receive Yeshua HaMasiah while we are still alive. We are still in the flesh. It means we are still alive. When we are no longer in the flesh, our flesh is already buried underneath, six feet underneath the ground. There is no way to receive Yeshua Messiah and to receive the grace of salvation. Amen? Hence, Christians have to use our flesh very wisely. Aside from the body, we cannot receive rewards. In other words, The soul cannot do anything alone. Only when we have the flesh. Itong soul, tandaan ninyo, if we will, if I have to give an example, ang ating kaluluwa, para siyang gulong. Gulong na yun ang metal na nasa loob. So kung wala siyang nakabalot na yung rubber, ay hindi tatakbo ang sasakyan. So, ang nakabalot sa gulong na metal na rubber, yung rubber yun ang ating katawan na nasisira. Diba? So, katulad niyan ang ating sitwasyon. Aside from the body, we cannot receive rewards. In other words, without the, the rubber na nagbalot doon sa sa gulong niya, walang tire na tinatawag na tire na magpatakbo ng ating mga sasakyan. In other words, the soul cannot do anything alone. It must be with the flesh so that he, the soul, can be saved. Seriously, calling all of us to have an attachment to life and to strive to have grace of salvation. We must have the earnest desire to live and to receive our reward of eternal life. Amen? Some people say, I don't need a reward. And Yeshua Messiah says to us, you wicked and lazy servants, I will cast you out. See, if we will say that we do not need the reward, we do not need the eternal life, then we will be cast out by the Lord Yeshua Masih on the day of judgment to where? To the lake of fire. Together with Satan, the false prophets, the false teachers. Amen? In the end, some will enter the Father's house and have the Father's joy. But others will be cast out outside from the Father's house. In the parable of the wedding feast, God has shown us what will happen when we are not prepared to face Him in the end of the ages. Matthew 22, verses 11 to 13. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away. Cast him into the outer darkness. 
there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Ganun ang mangyayari. We cannot join in the banquet of the Lamb. We will be thrown outside the gate of heaven. Amen? We have to receive grace to have everlasting life. No matter what happens, we should endeavor to receive grace while we are still in the flesh. We have to endeavor to receive grace. Our body is the only chance to receive grace. While we are still alive, we have to repent and become children of God. So, at this point, anyone who has joined us for the first time and has not received Yeshua HaMasiah as his Lord and Savior, I encourage you now to invite the Lord our God to dwell in your heart and to become a true child of God. I now invite you to follow me as I pray the sinner's prayer in an audible voice. Amen? Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your ever loving kindness and faithfulness. Thank you, Father, that you have been patient, waiting for me for a long, long time to return to you. I thank you, Lord, that you have sent your only begotten Son to destroy the devil and to gift me with salvation so as I can come back to you, Father. Lord, Yeshua Messiah, I praise you for saving me and for sealing me with the Holy Spirit of God. I invite you now to come into my heart and to dwell in it as my Lord and Savior, my Deliverer, and my God. Forgive me for all my sins. Help me also to forgive others who have hurt me. Write my name now in the book of life so that on judgment day I will be certainly with you, Lord Jesus, in your dwelling place in the new Jerusalem. Amen, amen, and amen. Today, man does not need any more the six cities of refuse. We only need only the only begotten Son of God, Yeshua HaMasiah, to take us back to the Father in heaven. A life with Christ is a life embellished with the power of the Holy Spirit of God who seals us for redemption. But we need to live the pleasures of this world which is ruled by the devil so be able to be able to receive the grace of God and the gift of salvation amen 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 hallelujah 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 let us pray father god thank you father that tonight today you have again given us new thoughts new ideas, new teachings that will make us closer to you, Father, and to make us closer to the path of righteousness which we will have to tread on to reach the new Jerusalem, your heavenly dwelling place. Thank you, Father, that you have sent us your only begotten Son, Yeshua Hamasaya, as our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our God. I pray, Father God, that you will let the Holy Spirit of God manifest in each one of us who are watching this live streaming, particularly those who have just received your Son, Yeshua Messiah, as their Lord and Savior, so that the Holy Spirit will make them thirst and to make them continually seek for the truth to be with you in the new Jerusalem 
I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Please stand by for the response song. Praise God. Thank <laughs> you.